Uh, so let me take this stock exchange example. There was in tutorial number three, I guess. Yeah. So I will create a new. Also, why I ask about Python? Uh, as I remember, we calculated uh, MLA and the uh, method of moments in um, in Python. And I thought we will solve uh, well these things here. You will see. So please try to distinguish these two different concepts. So first of all, you, you establish the rule how exactly you want to calculate something. And then you calculate so all these calculations might be proceeded in python that's okay uh, but when you build this rule you need to take your paper pen and write all the formulas there just to understand how exactly you want to you want to do this okay so let, let me give you uh, the following example uh, we haven't dealt with this yet but i guess it would be nice because in the future we will we will use such such a thing so we have a data on the stock uh, market on the stock returns and um, so you are familiar with this table you did the uh, quiz number three so what i want so first of all i want to take the uh, stock return on apple only I have 78 observations, which is okay. I mean, the 78 months. So now what I want to do, and uh, here I will also demonstrate you something new for you uh, in Python. Uh, and uh, also I will demonstrate you the following. So my question is, so suppose that there is a question. Um, what is the probability that um, well you had this you had this problem in the um, in the probability course so what is the probability that uh, the apple stock will let's say decrease two months uh, out of five subsequent periods something like this is it apple, apple stock price yes what so is it the nominal distribution right that's true we want to model this number of stock price decreases as a binomial distribution. So we say that X has a binomial distribution with one known parameter because it's N, uh, N equals five. We want to know this out of five, but the probability is not known for us. So what is the probability that on the particular month uh a stock of apple will decrease um well that's that's a question so first of all we want to probably build this variable in our data frame uh, in order to see what happens here so if if the return is negative minus 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 then it decreases if the return is positive then it increases. Um, I haven't shown you how to make all these things, so this is something new for you, and I will probably make a separate tutorial on this. So, uh, how to create a new variable? I just do the same thing as before. You know how I call variables from the table. I just need to write down the table, and in square brackets, I write down the um the name of the variable so in our case it's going to be let's say a apple uh, let's say increase something like this 
with underscore root. Then equals, and then what this variable must be. I want this variable to be to equal one if stock decreases, if the stock price decreases, otherwise it's gonna be zero. Uh, well, how can I do this? Uh, I can define this in the following way. So before I define this, let me demonstrate you. There are also some uh, relations called logicals in Python and also in any other programming language. So uh, logicals uh, working in the following way, you just write the logical relation, for example, less than zero. Then look what happens. Uh, it gives you true when the value is less than zero and it gives you false otherwise. Okay, nice, that's what we want. But now I want to convert this true and false into one and zero. So true must be one, false must be zero. Uh, in order to do this, I can simply multiply this by one. Take this in parentheses, multiply by one, and you see that now instead of true and false, I have one and zero. And now I take this and define my variable a will increase as the following thing. This is one the simplest and intuitively understandable way. So now in my data frame, I have the last variable here, a will increase, and it has once whenever this number is negative and it has zeros whenever this number is positive. Well, seems to be okay. Now, let's go back to the question. The question is to find the probability or to estimate the probability that the Apple stock will decrease two months out of five subsequent periods, out of five subsequent months. So how can we find this P? And now what we need, we need an estimator. So we assume that X is distributed as a binomial variable with five and p n equals five and p equals something that we don't know. Um, how can we estimate? We have two different approaches to answer to this question. So first approach is method of moments. Second approach is method of maximum likelihood. So let's try the first one, method of moments. So the logic of method of moments, once again, is very simple. Uh, I need to equate first or second or third, depending on how many parameters I want to estimate, uh, population moments with the sample moments. So I need to know what is my expected value. And I need to know, I need to equate this to the sample mean, which is here. All right, so be careful, we are talking about random variables here, not their realization. So whatever I have as the sample realization, I plug it here. Okay, what is the expected value of the binomial distribution? What is expected value of x? So usually it's n times p. Mm, if, you, if you are not sure, so in, in, in the exercise session here, for example, you calculated these expected values because those are not standard distributions. In, in, in your exercise sessions, you had just some weird distribution, one with probability theta, two with probability y minus theta. Okay, so there is this stuff. Um, uh, and therefore you needed to, to build this uh, thing. 
in our case uh, it is much simpler because we for example we can use wikipedia so we just just write binomial distribution you go to wikipedia and usually on the right hand side you see all the necessary uh, parameters of this distribution so here we have mean which is np okay we just can use it and we also derive this np uh, in uh, our probability course but if you don't remember well no problem to use wikipedia okay this is np and then according to the method of moments i need to equate this np with with this right so if n is known then everything is just simple because my p is calculated as um wait a second that's something strange wait yeah um uh this is this is not a correct approach uh why because in this case x is the number of negative outcomes over five variables so it complicates things a bit But okay, so since we started with this, let, let, let's do this. Let, let, let's find out the, the way uh, of this. So we have uh, basically here uh, P, the estimator of P, the method of moments. Uh, which is equal to 1 over n squared times this or simply this uh, average average divided by n okay, like this so this is the method of moments estimator so the second approach is method of ma maximum likelihood uh, I guess we will get in trouble with method of maximum likelihood because the like the probability mass function contains. Okay, so let's try at least likelihood. I'm sorry, this uh, x over n, this six is uh, x bar, x bar, it's simple. X bar, mean. x bar, simple mm -hmm. mean. Yes, okay, thank you. But be careful, x bar is the number of, uh, so x as a variable is the number of negative outcomes out, uh, over five, out of five periods, which means that we need to calculate something like this. So back to our data, we need to calculate, well, here one, two, three, four, five periods, and out of them we have one, two, three, four, negatives which means that in this particular period of five months we have x equals four right so then i take these five periods and from them one two three four again x equals four then i have these one two three four five and out of them i have again four negatives and so on so i i guess you understand what is x in this case x is the probability to observe x is the number of negative uh, returns in periods of five i need to count how many of them i have uh kind of how many of these ones where is that how many of these ones i have in these blocks of five and then i calculate the average of them and divide by by five yeah I, I i've made 
myself a little bit problematic task but again so okay we, we have it why not to deal with this okay so method of max uh, method of maximum likelihood uh, the approach the usual approach is the following so first of all we need to build a likelihood function which is the function of p uh, for this we need to remember what is the probability mass function of uh, of a binomial distribution so if you don't remember it's here n over k p to the power of k and then this is 1 minus p to the power of n minus k so we can use this in the following way uh, we have sample of estimates Need to calculate the product uh, oh, the product of these things. So we take n. Uh, here we have k, which is in our case xi. Uh, so now we, we are using small xi. So we assume that there must be some number, some given number. So p to the power of xi and then 1 minus p to the power of n minus xi. Okay, so this is our likelihood function. We need to find such p that maximizes this likelihood function. Usually it is problematic and for this case it also problematic. So that's why we want to take the log likelihood function. Uh, but before taking logs, so let's reconstruct a little bit this uh, this product. So what we have, uh, we have p to the power of sum of this xi. So we multiply p to the power of x1, p to the power of x2, p to the power of x3. So in overall we have this p to the power of sum of these xi's. Of i is from 1 to n. So this thing is 1 minus p to the power of n minus x1, y minus p to the power of n minus x2, and so on. So in overall we have uh, 2n, right? So n, no, 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 n times n times n times n, so n squared. So it's n plus n plus n plus n, n times. So n times n is going to be, and here it's going to be the same thing, sum of xi's. So now we need to deal with this stuff somehow. So we have this product left. Mm, and let's rewrite this in order to understand if we are able to do with this something. So there is going to be xi factorial n minus xi factorial and then there is a product so n factorial times n factorial times n factorial and so on uh, in, the, in the numerator and the same thing is here. Well I don't think that we can do something with this and looking ahead actually we don't need to do with this because look um, well we can leave it like this uh, the thing is that uh, later uh, I'm trying to look one step ahead later I need to take the log of this likelihood function right and uh, when I take the log this thing will be just a number because i know n in principle i will know what is n i will know what is x i those are numbers and when i take the derivative of log l uh, it will give me just zero so i don't care about this term so now when i take the log of these things what i have so the log of the first term uh, will give me sum of these xi's times log p
uh, plus. So this thing times log one minus p, vice versa, log one minus p times this, and plus log of that product which is just the sum of logs of these things. So it's here. 1 to n, the sum of these, of logs of these things. Again, when we collect a sample, when we have our sample here, these are just numbers. I know that n is 5, if I'm trying to estimate uh, the binomial distribution with the parameter 5. And uh, I know, in principle, I'm able to calculate how many of these i's I have here, which is, which is okay. So now, what is p? According to the method of maximum likelihood, this is the derivative of the log likelihood function. Not, not, not p, the derivative, but uh, p is the maximizer of uh, this log likelihood function, so the argmax. And in order to find this argmax, I need to take the derivative of this log L with respect to P. And what happens? Uh, here I have this sum divided by the derivative of log P, which is P, right? So this sum divided by P, this is the first term. Here I have, wait, I needed to take this in brackets, definitely. I have this term with minus divided by 1 minus p. Y minus appears here because log, uh, derivative of log 1 minus p is 1 over 1 minus p. And then I also take the derivative of 1 minus p, which is just minus 1. And this term disappears because there is no p. There is just a constant, well, we are fine, we don't need to trouble ourselves with all these derivatives of factorials and stuff. Okay, we equalize this to zero and now we solve this, now we solve this uh, equation. So we need to derive p, which is going to be in our case, so I can basically, whenever I make this equal to zero, I can write that this is the maximum likelihood estimate. So why only here I make this uh, comment? Because uh, before it might be any p. So my likelihood function, my I can plug here instead of p any number. But now I have one special number which makes this derivative equal zero. Therefore, I somehow want to uh, point that this p is a special p. This is p hat MLE. This is a special p that maximizes my likelihood function. It's not like any p, any estimator, it's just a special thing. Okay, so uh, we need to solve this equation. Uh, it's gonna be 1 minus p MLE multiplied by this. Uh, equals to this multiplied by p m l e and when I open the brackets I have this sum minus this sum multiplied by p m l e equals to the n squared multiplied by PMLE minus the sum multiplied by PMLE. So okay, on the left hand side and on the right hand side I have the same term, this minus PMLE multiplied by the sum, uh, which I can just uh, here and here, I just can drop it. And I have 
the sum equals n squared times p m l e. Ah, uh, right. And from here I can derive that p m l e equals to this sum of x i's divided by n squared. And finally I come to the same result as for the method of moments. Uh, this is not always true. Uh, remember guys that uh, two approaches for standard uh, for standard distributions, these two approaches give us usually the same result. You see that in order to estimate p hat uh, with the method of moments, uh, I do this with, in order to estimate p hat with uh, the help of maximum likelihood estimate, I have the same rule, but I came to this uh, using the longer way. But in the exercise session, uh, I took several problems that actually gave you different approaches. Look, in this case, you had theta by method of maximum, by method of moments, estimated like two minus sample average. In method of maximum likelihood, you had a completely different approach. And you had completely different results, as I remember. No, results are, uh, results are similar, but the, the formulas are different. Oh, the right? Results, the, the, the results are different. Let me check. Wait, here we had one, 1 over 3. And here we also had 1 over 3. I mean, the estimates. Oh, the numbers. Oh, maybe in the next uh, exercises, I remember that. We in in the next exercises, yes. In the next exercises, even numbers are different. Yes. That's what I wanted to show you. Well, in the second, we they coincided, but two different samples produce different numbers. And uh, here, and here, yes, we had. No, here we had only maximum method of moments, maximum likelihood. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in the first exercise, here you had different rules to calculate the estimate. Uh, they gave you the same result, but probably it's just a coincidence given by this uh, example. So you need to remember that these two methods exist, not because somebody wants to torture students. <laughs> these two methods exist because sometimes one method uh, produces better uh, estimators. Sometimes the other method produces better estimators. So method of maximum likelihood usually is more preferable because, um, well, let's say it works uh, in more cases. But it might seem a bit lengthy and a bit different with all these derivatives and things. Method of moments, you see, just three steps and we are here. Uh, okay, nice. So we have a rule how we can estimate this PMLE. Now we need to collect a sample. We need to collect a sample of this on this X on the random variable. And we are not done yet with this. So we have only a sample of uh, we have a sample of Apple returns and we produce these ones, which uh, we need to count how many of them do we have. Uh, once again, now the logic is the following with this particular practical exercise. We need to take blocks of five months, like from here to here, and we need to calculate how many negative numbers are there. Then we take the next block of five months, then we take the next block of five months, and so on. Right? That's, that's the goal. Let me think, are they, are they independent? If they are, why not? No, uh, we may have a problem here, because if I take, let's say, uh, if I have five months 
from September 2015 to January 2016 and I have these five results and when I shift it by one month ahead so maybe these are not gonna be exactly random so maybe for me it's better to do the following maybe for me it's better to break the whole period 78 months into periods of five like five months next five months next five months and so on such that they they do not coincide and uh, take a sample of them this is gonna be better i guess yes yes and uh, how many observations will we have so out of 78 75 divided by 5 it's gonna be uh, 10 15 15 observations okay just because i came up with this kind of, it's kind of an improvisation i guess uh, it would work so now we have these things ones and zeros and i need as, as i said if i would show you for example like first 20 uh let's see what happens when you're not attentive enough to the syntax uh so i need to do the following i need first five months i calculate how many ones i have here it's four then i take the next five months i calculate how many ones i have it's three then i take the next five months it's one then i take the next five months it's one and so on i guess the logic is clear um how to do this automatically because i don't want to just <laughs> do this well it might seem a bit difficult and complicated for you right now uh it's possible to do in python and i hope that somewhere in the future we will come to the idea of uh, loops and so on so now i want to do the following so i know that there are 78 uh so it's gonna be semi-automatic uh, not fully automatic uh i want to do this i want to write the for loop uh, for i in uh, range from 0 to 25 so i will have no, I will have 15 observations, uh, which basically I asked the following. There is a range of numbers from 0 to 15 to 14, because I explained you that all the time Python starts counting from 0, from 0 to 14. I want to, I want to make the same operation, and this operation looks like this. I want to take the data, uh, this apple increase, I haven't shown you this yet, but if you want to take some range of numbers, you also may use this i log, not on log, you know how to work. Now, I log works with indices, so you need to provide the numeric indices. For example, if I want to do like this, um, I log from 0 to 4. Look what happens. Uh, exactly, it shows me the four first numbers. From 0 to 5, it shows me these numbers. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Right? Zero how confused i can do like this uh, so these are five returns from my column here uh whenever i ask this from five to ten let's say it will give me from fifth to ninth so the last one does not include is not included that's what i want to do i want to make it but i want to repeat these things right so i want to take this i log and in order to repeat i do this i to i plus five so look what would happen mm. do this to seven multiply by five 
So look what happens. Uh, if i is 0, it will take me from 0 to 5. If i is 1, it will take me from 5 to 10. If i is 2, it will take me from 10 to 15. That's exactly what I want to do. I want to take these blocks of 5. Uh, as I said, this is, might seem a bit difficult for you, and that's not what I want to, you to understand exactly right this, but you, at least if you are interested in, in Python, you may try something like these four loops uh, yourself. And later we will come to this point. Uh, and it will finish at 14. So 14 times 5 will give me uh, 50, 70, 70, and uh, 75, right? So that's exactly the last thing. So now what I want to do with these blocks, I want to calculate their sum. You remember how to calculate mean or standard deviation. So the same thing for pandas. Uh, for pandas data, data frame, you can use this method sum. And I want to store this sum somewhere. So for this, I can create, for example, numpy array, numpy array, which is gonna be, uh, so that's gonna be my x. Sorry, so, you said it, it doesn't include the last number, yes? Doesn't. Yes. So shouldn't it be plus six then? No, no, no. It's it's correct because it's gonna be. You see, that's from five to ten. So it includes the first and it doesn't include the last. So for example, here it's gonna be from five to nine, which is exactly five numbers. That's what I want. Oh, okay. So I create this numpy array and now I. I'll provide the following so x uh, i is going to be equal to this i hope this should work let's try yeah i forgot to write in range Oops. uh okay it must be what i was one i guess mm. Wrong. So, uh, okay, so let me check. But it was also how to change the maybe types are uh, different, no? No, 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 no. Uh, okay, so let me check. Uh, I don't remember. So because you are familiar to this uh, NumPy array, so that's why I want to copy up. Ah, yeah, append. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Ah, something works a bit different. That's false and by append. Then I have x numbers. Right now, yeah, okay. Now it works. Now I have this x. So look what happens. Now I calculated how many negatives I have in each block of five. This is my sample. If you don't trust me, so let's see once again. Uh, let's calculate this. And usually, if you write some code, I recommend you to check everything by your hands and by your eyes. So look, I'm taking the first block of five returns, and I count how many negatives I have. One, two, three, four. This is this four. Then I take the second block, 
the next one and I calculate how many negatives are there. Three. This is three. Then I take the next block and I count how many negatives are there. This is one. So the last block, this is also one. So I hope that if four first entries are correct, the all other entries are also correct. So this is our sample. This is our sample. We created our sample. And now, only now, we can use Python for what? For producing the estimate of this P. Uh, well, uh, with hands, we will do this like um, the average of X, which is this average of these things. Oops. So let me write everything with hand first and then we will count everything on Python. So 4 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 0 plus 3 plus 2. Okay, so this is our sample. Uh, first I want to make uh, the calculation of x bar on a small x bar. equals this divided by how many of them do I have do you remember how to 15 I, I guess size of x right length of x yeah 14 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 sorry 14 yeah 14 um so divided by 14 so now i uh, we can apply what we know and p in x 2.07 07 and now this p is 2.07 divided by n which is 5 so we used 5 everywhere as the number of Days so which will give us uh, if we want to calculate this it's gonna be 0 0.41 0 0.41 so here we are we have this number 0 41 which is the estimate of this probability that in five subsequent month uh, at least one month uh, this is the probability that in one month there is going to be uh, a decrease in uh, in the stock price so remember that this is based on the random sample and uh, the outcome is not necessary a uh, point or does not necessary does not necessarily point exactly at the true unknown population parameter that's kind of we need we need to remember about this so this is just one number one shot and we are not sure about whether this shot is successful or not uh, but now with this we can at least make some predictions so now knowing this estimate uh, we can uh, for example uh, predict the probability or oh, predict the okay yeah the probability that in the next five months uh, let's say the apple stock will decrease over the next 
over the next five months, the Apple stock will decrease in, let's say, two months. So you are familiar with this task. You did this in the first exercise session and the second exercise session. So now we, uh, we do the following. So we say, well, our X as a binomial random variable uh, is distributed according to the following uh, distribution. And now we have the estimate 0 0.41. That's what we got from our estimation procedure. And uh, what do we want to know? We want to know the probability that uh, the probability that X is going to be equal to 2. Well, we know everything for answering this question. We can take the mass function of the binomial uh, random variable so here it's going to be 5 here it's going to be 2 so p is 0 41 this is 2 minus 1 minus 0 41 5 minus 2 uh, and uh, I also know how to deal with this task in Python right so if we know that this is p if you know that n is 5 uh, and we not want to calculate the probability, it's going to be stats, uh, binom, uh, what's, what's next? PMF, right? I don't remember. Um, where was it in the exercise session number two? For yes, distribution. binomial PMF yes and then you provide the number uh, so it's gonna be uh, two uh, then you provide what n and pi so n and pi aha uh -huh. I didn't load the library stats Zero, sorry for three, four, five. Let's see. So, is this practical enough to somehow prove that we are not doing something unreasonable? So, I guess this is yes. very practical. This is very practical task. You want to know what is the chance that next two months or not next two months right because if you want to know about the next two months you need to take this probability and you need to just multiply 0 0.41 by 0 0.41 but in the next five months at least in two months um not exactly in two months exactly in two months uh, the stock of apple will decrease will be decreasing be decreasing this is a very good example thank you and you see, so I wanted to demonstrate that before calculating something, you really need to understand all these underlying concepts. So how I should calculate this? And uh, well, since we spent a lot of time on this example, so let me also give you another approach to the same question, which might be more, let's say, simple. And who knows, probably it's also, it, 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 it has, uh, its own benefits so another question is um, well we can also model the probability or let's say we can model uh, a random variable uh, let's say this case this case as a Bernoulli random variable. What is a Bernoulli random variable? Bernoulli random variable is uh, just one 
particular uh, trial and it finishes with the success or with error. So basically the binomial distribution is the extension of Bernoulli. And uh, in the binomial case, we have uh, the sum of Bernoulli random variables. So what I created here, what I created here with these ones and zeros, uh, where was it? Uh... Sorry, may I ask a question? Mm -hmm. uh, why do we take samples of five? Uh, in the previous example, uh, why do we take the samples of five? Why don't we take like the whole sample and find the probability that the uh, uh, stock decreases? Well, that's exactly where I'm heading to. So I just designed this example in such a way voluntarily. So I just said, okay, so let's let's assume that X uh, is the number of month when the stock price will be decreasing out of five months, just as an example. But yes, your question is reasonable. Why can't we employ the whole sample, the whole number of months? In this case, uh, it will remind us the following. So that's what I'm trying to demonstrate to you. We can model this uh, case as a Bernoulli random variable. So we have n independent trials. So in our case, each trial is a month. And, and in each trial we have a, let's say success in our case decrease in the stock price with probability p with probability p yes that's another possibility we will have every month is going to be an independent observation of this exercise of, of this uh, experiment not blocks of five months but every month is going to be uh, such thing so let's try let's see how the estimate is going to be different um, well again uh, if x if x has this Bernoulli uh, distribution with only one parameter pi. Uh, first of all, we want to find the estimate of a Bernoulli random variable with the help of method of moments. So let me borrow these things from here. Yeah, method of moments. Uh, before applying method of moments, uh, let me also remind you that x has the following probability. So x equals 1 with the probability pi and uh, x equals 0. x equals 0 with probability 1 minus pi. Uh, we can write this down in the following way. So x equals to xi Because we would need this for the maximum likelihood estimate. That's pi to the power of uh, 1 minus xi. So look what happens. Whenever xi is 1, this is 0. I mean, the, the, the power is 0. And then this is 1. And then it equals to pi, which is here. Whenever xi is 0, this part is 1. And this part is 1 minus pi. So that's the convenient way to write down the probability mass function. We just need to specify that for xi, this works for xi equals 0 and 1 only. So now for the method of moments, the initial step is the same, but now we need to remember what is the expected value of the Bernoulli random variable. And so this is simple. I take 0 times 1 minus p plus 1 times p. 
which is e. Okay, so I equate p to the sample average, and from here immediately I get the method of moments estimator, which is just a sample average. But now x is different, right? So don't don't confuse this. Before in the Bernoulli it was a bit more difficult exercise because x was the number of negative outcomes in blocks of five. Now x is either zero or one. This is exactly x that I created here, ones and zeros. Well, those are the outcomes. And now I need to calculate just the sample average of this thing, which is kind of simple. So let me also demonstrate to you the method of maximum likelihood estimate uh, estimator for the Bernoulli random variable. So method of maximum likelihood, I borrow this function, plug it here. Right, so this is just the product of these things. And then, by the same logic, I can write this p to the power of sum of x's and 1 minus p to the power of n minus sum of x's. Because there are 1's and 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and times gives me n. And this product simply disappears, so I don't need this. Uh, the same step number 2, I take the log likelihood function. Uh, which is gonna be what? Which is gonna be log of pi, log of p, multiplied by the sum, plus log of 1 minus p, multiplied by this. Multiply by this. Uh, the next step is to take a derivative and to find the maximum likelihood estimate. Dot estimator. Uh, what's what's here? It's the sum divided by p. Uh, what's here? It's minus this thing. divided by 1 minus p. Again, minus comes because of the chain rule. The derivative of log 1 minus p is 1 over 1 minus p, and then the derivative of minus p is minus 1. So this is equals to 0, and instead of p, I need to specify that this is a special p, which is the maximum likelihood estimator of, of p. So I can copy this kind of text. Here. Okay, and I guess that the rest I can simply copy from here because it re resembles the steps from the previous thing. So the only difference here is the following. So instead of n squared, I have n here, right? And the, all the other things are simply similar. I multiply sum of x. By this, here I have n minus sum of x's multiplied by PMLE. Here I have n times PMLE. And uh, here finally I arrive to the following result PMLE is just the sum of x's divided by n, which is the sample average. Okay, again, we see that method of moments estimator and maximum likelihood estimator just coincide. Uh, and now uh, we can calculate this x bar, which coincides with this PMLE in a straightforward way. Uh, it is gonna be this. 
once again, look, I created this string of ones and zeros. Now let me show you the first, let's say, 20 entries. Okay, one, zero, one, 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 and so on. So one is when, whenever there is a negative return and zero otherwise means positive. So I just need to sum them and divide by their, the number of, of, of these observations. So it's going to be one plus zero plus one plus one plus one, right? So there's one, 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 one again, plus zero, and so on, right? And then it ends with, let's take something from tail, uh, one and one, let's say. So how many do I have? Uh, again, so it's length, 78. 78. So now you know how to do this. So I told you uh, in the last tutorial, whenever you want to calculate the average, you just simply use this method mean. But be careful. This method works only for pandas objects. So you are not able to calculate this for the following x, for example. Right. So that's why here I used mean from NumPy. But here I can simply use mean from from pandas so it's 0 41 now look we have uh we have from the previous uh, from the previous calculation we had this estimate 0 414 from this from this example we have this estimate they are close to each other but they are different in the second time we covered more variables that's true that's true our sample size is greater uh and that's totally correct in principle as i said uh, bernoulli and binomial uh, distributions and variables are connected because what is Binomial random variable is just the sum of Bernoulli random variables. Uh, therefore, usually when you have a binomial distribution, you estimate P with the help of Bernoulli distribution, in the, with the help of the second approach, because it's just simpler. But sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes, uh, for example, there is a nice, a nice example when you want to use only binomial distribution and n is not known for you you need to estimate even n which makes your life a bit more complicated so the example is the following suppose you want to calculate the probability that a criminal is going to be captured by a police you don't know n you don't know how many crimes happened because you never observe all crimes in in reality you cannot take only observable crimes because in this case it's going to be well a bit biased so n is not known for you and from the sample of captured criminals and from the sample of observed crimes you want to infer about how many crimes are there in general the report uh, reported not reported crimes uh, and crimes which are not observable which even police doesn't know about in our case it's much simpler because we know that there are months and there are no kind of un unobservable months for us it's okay with the stock exchange but in practice, sometimes we have more fancy problems and uh, even N is not known. So that's why you cannot apply uh, by no, uh, Bernoulli for the estimation of this probability that the crime is going to be uh, revealed or reported or the police will capture the criminal. Uh, but uh, in this case, you need to use binomial distribution with unknown N. Sometimes it happens. Well, 
I hope that we spent a fruitful class today and uh, it really gives you some sense of first of all of the uh, necessity of these two methods why do we want to uh, know and understand this method of moments method of maximum likelihood and you see that the last step is kind of technical so we need python most of the times at least for at, at this moment as a calculator we just have a data and we want to just transform this data uh, such that it gives us a convenient way to for the calculation that's it still we need to work with our hands uh, on the pen and paper and calculate uh, build the formulas otherwise well we wouldn't be able to to build all these things at least this is some illustration of course if you want to do some hardcore uh data analysis and data science uh, you probably need to be more uh let's say educated in 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 this uh, sphere i mean you must be able to build all these estimators uh but in 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 a large number of cases uh, you are fine with some standard estimators that we are using right now all these binomial things, normal distribution, exponential distribution, and so on. So those are known, so those are fine and established. And well, most of the cases with the standard things, uh, no need to go that deep. And we will not go that deep. I just give you some illustration how this works, where all these estimators come from. Then we will concentrate on simpler things definitely questions so in the end now we have the probability that uh, one particular month is uh, in loss right we have an estimate of, a, of this probability we don't know look so just to give you a sense what we are gonna do what was my plan for today <laughs> before we started this discussion my plan for today was the following uh, can we, from this uh, sample, um, get... Uh, okay, well, we, we still have 10, 10 minutes. Um, uh, let, me, let me give you another thing. Um, so, remember, this is a particular number, uh, which is based on a particular sample. We know that this number may vary. It has some potential it, it has some variance so now let me show you the following thing uh based on on the previous uh, approach so this pmle is a random variable Is a random variable and this is a particular outcome of this random variable 041 so now we want to know how wide or how tight is the possible spread how or how tight is the spread of its possible outcomes So if I take another sample, if I take a sample of other month, how tight is going to be the spread of this? So zero, is it possible to have 0 0.6, for example, using another sample of month, using another period of time? Or is it possible to obtain uh, 0 0.2? So that's a question. What is the variance of this? And, and in order to answer this, we want to, first of all, we want to calculate the variance, right? So we want to estimate what is the variance of this random variable. We know that, well, for any for every random variable, we have, a, we have a variance. So let's try to build this. What is the variance of this? Well, this is the variance of x bar 
And luckily, from, ve from the very first class, we know what is the variance of sample mean. Well, it is the variance of these things. But now we must be careful because x is not normally distributed and therefore it might it might be slightly different. So first of all, we take this n out of the variance because n is the oops, n is constant, so it's going to be n squared. Then it's going to be variance of this sum of axes. So as axes are independent variables, independent Bernoulli variables, uh, I can, because of the independency, I can claim that this is the, instead of the variance of the sum, it becomes the sum of variances. The sum of variances. And look, now, what is the variance of xi? xi is the Bernoulli random variable. Is a Bernoulli random variable. Uh, variance of xi. So how to, how to build this variance? So we know the Bernoulli distribution here, and uh, so variance of uh, any random variable is what is ex uh, expected. Uh, value of this variable squared minus the expectation squared, right? So we know that the expectation uh, is P. So therefore, we just need to calculate this expectation. So we know this 0 and 1. We know its probabilities. So now if I want to calculate the expectation of X squared, it will be 0 squared times 1 minus p plus 1 squared times p minus what? Expectation of x is p squared. Expectation of x is p, so therefore it's going to be p squared. So it gives me p minus p squared, uh, which will be p times 1 minus p. So this is the variance of xi. Now, here I have n variance of xi because there is a sum. So therefore, the variance of this PMLE is what? It's P times 1 minus P divided by n. Okay. I hope it's clear because there is going to be n of these terms. And when I divide this n, times p times 1 minus p by n squared, I, I get this. Uh, I don't know p, I do not know p, the true, true, true p. Therefore, I don't know this. Well, this must be clear that I don't know this. But I know p hat. Right? p hat equals 0 0.41. Therefore, I can estimate this variance. So I don't know the true variance of my estimator. It's not possible to know if I don't know p. But I can estimate this variance because I know p hat. So and uh, this is going to be the estimator of my variance. So now the things are going to be a bit more complicated by, but guys try to see this picture clear. Once again, the estimator itself is a random variable. And in the exercise session, you have seen that two different samples give you two different numbers. This is exactly the illustration of this randomization. And if you want to know 
how what how um, let's say how far this random variable outcomes can be from the center from the true population parameter uh, so there is a measure of this variability which is called variance uh, I demonstrated to you the logic of this variance several times uh, in finance well if you have the variance of the stock return large it's going to be the spread of this bell is going to be more uh, or tight if the variance is low so the things the same things we are going to do here we just need, want to know how likely is that to have a large deviation of this number 041 uh, from its center and in order to understand this we want to know this variance but variance depends on p we don't know through p so you know there's always these circles instead of p i can plug here this p hat and then i will get variance hat so i will get the estimator of my variance so the estimator of my variance of of, of the variance of this p hat mle is going to be this so i will plug instead of p these p hats and I'm able to find this thing. It's going to be uh, 0 0.41 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.41 divided by n by 78 by the sample size. So how much is that? 0 0.41 multiplied by 0 uh, 0.59 divided by 78. Well, 0 0.031. Why 58? 78. You maybe, maybe, maybe you I said I said minus... wrong, but I wrote 78. No, uh, you said that one minus. Well, yes, uh, one minus 0 0 0 0 0.041 is 0 0.59. But right. you, I, I thought you said uh, 58. Okay, maybe I said it ah. wrongly, but I calculated this correct, right? So oh, 0 0.0031. Okay. Okay. Okay, so something like this, 0, 1. So this is the variance. Is this large variance? Well, relative to the estimate, not that, that large, right? Uh, and uh, now this variance will lead us to the next step. But this next step, we need to introduce this in the next lecture. We will start with that. Uh, but let me remind you one thing before we finish. Um, there was in probability course, we had one interesting thing. Um, I guess it was... Let me check. I guess it was here. Maybe not. It was in the lecture. Number eight. Yeah, it was in the lecture number eight. There was an empirical rule. Uh, well. This empirical rule is something like the rule of thumb. It's not a rule uh, for all distributions, but you will see that, well, when the sample size is large enough, well, the distribution of measurement is approximately normal. So you remember that we spoke when the sample size is large, the sample mean is distributed approximately normal, which is exactly here. Uh, and... Uh, we said that approximately 95% of measurements are contained within mu plus minus 2 sigma. So what is sigma? In this case, sigma is the standard deviation estimate of this PMLE. So I want to calculate it. 
and for this particular case I call this standard error standard error of PMLE so basically the standard error of an estimator is a square root of the variance like this and this is the counterparty of this sigma standard error this is a standard deviation of the estimator so what's that it's uh, 0 0.056 let's say 0 0.0557 okay and now using this uh, by the empirical rule we can say that approximately 95% of uh, random samples will produce the uh, estimates within within this plus to minus plus minus two sigmas so which means that uh, within plus minus uh, so 0 0.11 this and you also had so it means that the deviation of the estimate of this estimate p hat mle from the true p which you don't know with probability 95 percent will not be or will not exceed 0 0.111 you must remember your home assignment on the sampling distributions and the exercise session on the sampling distributions. You had something like this. You had some tasks like there is a true unknown population mean and there is a sample mean. And you needed to calculate the probability or you needed to calculate the maximum or minimum possible deviation for a given probability of this exactly sample mean from the population mean. So the logic is the same here. So my estimate will not deviate from the true population parameter by more than 0 0.111. And even though I don't know what is this true population P, I know that the precision of this estimator is going to be like this. So I will deviate by no more than this number uh, with 95% chances, which means the following. If I have this estimate 0, 0,441, uh, what is the maximum possible true P with probability 95%? I just need to take 0, 0,441 plus 0, 111, and I will get 0, 0,521. So given probability 95% and given this empirical rule, uh, if I got this estimate 0, 0,41, with the confidence of 95%, I can say that the true population parameter does not exceed 0.52. On the other hand, the left bound of the true population parameter, which I don't know, is going to be 0 0.41 minus 0 0.11, which is 0 0.3, uh, 0.299. So remember, maybe last week, uh somebody asked me about uh, well if you don't know the true parameter 
if it's unknown for us, how on earth we can find it. So we are not able to find it, but we are able to find at least some boundaries where this target, unknown target, can be located. Now we establish these boundaries. But the proper discussion of these boundaries is going to be on the next lecture. I wanted just to show you that we can do more than just shooting one time in the direction of unknown goal. We can also say how precise we are. But I believe this is not a large pre precision, right? With this, well, from 0 0.3 to 0 0.52, well, we're still kind of unsure about this. And if the sample size will be larger, then the standard error is going to be smaller and then our precision is going to be larger as well. But this is the material of our next lecture. Questions? No question, questions, uh, but uh, I'd like to ask if it is possible to share the this file, uh, this word file, uh, to go through after the lesson. Sure, or sure. Uh, well, even though it was not the formal lec lecture, but I will post this on the uh, course page and I will also post the the recording of this lecture. Okay, thank you. No, no, and also the Python file. That one, yes, I will also, I will make it, let's say, with some comments, uh, look nicer and I will also send it to you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else has a question? Any questions? See that the number of participants significantly decreases. Okay, if there are no questions, then see you tomorrow and we will discuss exactly about how to establish those boundaries where the true population parameter can be located. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.